Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the SFL Post Game Show. A couple of interesting ball games tonight, low scoring ball games tonight in Orlando and Cleveland's offense with plenty of struggles. Sioux Falls beats Orlando 27 to 7. Dallas beats Cleveland 13 to 10. There are now four teams that are 2 and 0 in the SFL. Santa Fe, Dallas, Tallahassee, and Sioux Falls. We are going to open up the phone lines now, 210-473-8428. Remember, one call at a time. If you were a player, coach, or owner on the field or on the sideline tonight, give us a shout, and we'll try to get you on the air first before we discuss uh, tomorrow's epic slate of big games. Dallas gets the big upset. They go to 2-0. and Now, uh, people are saying upset. Was it an upset for Dallas? Uh, I suppose because of the high expectations of Cleveland, I would probably venture to say yes. Cleveland has now lost two games by a combined eight points, um, and the Sparrows end up getting six sacks on Orlando, who scored its lone touchdown in garbage time. That's the lowest amount of points Orlando has scored in franchise history. Previous low, according to our stat expert, F uh, letter 5 was 9. And Orlando falls to 1-1 and and a game back of Tallahassee and Santa Fe, the lone division with two undefeated teams. And Dallas is alone atop the Gray Conference now at 2-0. I bet people did not expect that uh, as Week 2 winds to a close. But Queen City, Louisville, D.C., uh, those two, those teams still in action left to play. Uh, Julian Tyree tonight, 34 of 50. Sioux Falls wins by 20 despite five interceptions, which is just crazy. Um, 341 yards for Tyree, uh, not surpassing his 471 career high last week, but still pretty solid numbers. Caesar Cannon had a strong night, 10 catches, 165 yards, one touchdown. And uh, Zeno Sika with a couple of picks in this game. Isaac Wallace with three picks um, in this game for Orlando in the loss. Uh, Benny Beasley just 70 yards on 23 touches. Orlando did a good job on them, but they need more out of Zach Parker. 24 carries, 57 yards. That ain't good for the highest paid running back in the league. Over on the flip side, uh, Dallas 14 of 25, 216, one touchdown, no picks for Marconi. Believe it's the second straight game. Marconi's not thrown an interception. Mario Savage also had um, a, a, a fairly strong performance, 23 of 31, 226, and one touchdown, but didn't hit a lot of downfield uh, completion. Scott King was again blanketed. He had another rough night. Uh, Stevie T. Diggs strong night. Mateo Maximo had six tackles. Behind the line of scrimmage is Davis's 117 yards on 28 carries. Uh, certainly wasn't his best night and, and a lot of TFLs uh, for the Cleveland Vipers in the loss who now have to swallow uh, an 0-2 record as they uh, head into week three and the cross-conference schedules. Again, open lines 210-473-8428 if we don't get a caller in the next five minutes to discuss tonight's games. We'll jump into Thursday's showdowns, um, and we'll talk a little bit about the cross-conference schedule coming up as well. SFL postgame show, Sioux Falls beats Orlando by 20. Uh, Dallas beats Cleveland by three, a game that at times it seemed like neither team really wanted to win. A lot of dropped, uh, a lot of drop passes um, and, and just... Uh, a bit of a sloppy play overall all across the league tonight. 6.05, you're on the SFL Post Game Show. Who do I have? Hey, Cam, it's Jason. Hey, Jason, uh, I'm sure you're feeling pretty good, 2-0. and Yeah, that was, that was a, a statement game for our defense, that's for sure. Um. Tyree throws five picks tonight, so that that averages that averages him out to two and a half per game, um, which is about what he was uh, pulling in last year, averaging about two per game in interceptions. Do you just chalk it up to you know he just made some silly throws tonight and he'll be fine? It was a kind of a perfect storm. Like the weather was bad, and then Orlando had some killer defensive backs, and then our offense is. 
I feel it's a lot more aggressive this year. So, yeah, and just all of that together, it kind of <laughs> it was the perfect storm for some interceptions. But thankfully, our defense was just insane tonight. Yeah, you. I, I want to dive into a little bit of the strategy and the thinking behind what you did with the defense this year. You know, you went with no star linebackers last year. Um, seemed to, to be okay against the run uh, tonight and against Los Angeles in week one. You've held Parky Chul and Zach Parker, two of what most people would say are the best running backs in the league, to under 100 yards and, and under four yards a carry. Is it is it all about the linebackers, or, or have you sort of philosophically – uh, change the way that, that you're approaching that side of the ball? Well, it hasn't been a complete makeover by any means, but uh, I got A.J. with me on the defense doing some defensive coordinating for us, and that's definitely been a big help. And uh, I think having these linebackers has made a, a huge change because they, they're getting in position a lot faster than – and my generic guys who I love, and I still got them as my backups, but <laughs> these linebackers are definitely helping us out for sure. And uh, shout out to AJ, uh, definitely doing a good job for us on the defensive side. Have you ever been a part of a of a game where you throw you you commit five turnovers and you win by twenty? <laughs> I'm I, I'd have to say this is a first, so. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about the league in general? We're seeing a lot of low-scoring games, which is just uncommon and unusual. And uh, and usually the defense starts slow in this league because the offense, you know, there's just so much to prepare for, and there's, you know, you don't know what you're seeing. But I mean, we're seeing 13 to 10s, 13 to 20s. You know, your your game for a while tonight was, you know, 17 nothing, uh 20 to nothing. It was it was very low scoring. What, what do you make out of out of the SFL actually uh showing some some defensive expertise out there and, and some really good defensive players uh playing just unbelievable through the first couple of weeks. I like it. I like it a lot. It's uh I think this season with the way things have changed uh, it, especially at the bronze level, I think now defenses have a little more depth, a little more skill to them. It's not just uh, put this guy here and hope he can hang on for dear life when Zach Parker comes barreling down the field. So uh, I think just the changes there, and uh, it's helped for defenses to not get ran over so much. I, I don't think you'll see a MVP at running back this year. It might be a defensive player. Sometimes you live and die by the swing pass tonight. Didn't work out too well for Benny Beasley. How did you like? How did you like his touches? Did you did you like uh, the fact that he led the league in catches last week? Did you did you want to see a little bit less out of him tonight? And and maybe what were the what were the reasonings behind um, the way that you've approached Beasley and how you wanted him to handle uh, tonight's matchup with Orlando? Mm, I didn't necessarily want him to see less touches. But uh, just more, more, a few more runs, and uh, I was definitely satisfied with uh, some of the inside runs we were able to uh, get going against Orlando. That was helpful. I didn't want it to be, I didn't want him to be so predictable coming into week two. But definitely, I, I wasn't gonna ignore it, uh, how he was able to make an impact. And like you said in the game, uh, when the Sparrows turned it around, it was that swing pass to Beasley to tore up the field down the sidelines and set us up for at least a field goal in that first half. And then after that, we didn't look back. You got to host the 300th game tonight. It was, you know, the weather wasn't ideal. Um, but, uh, but you know, it was it was your home opener. Um, fans enjoyed it as always. But but what was it? I'm sure, it, I'm sure you didn't get the feeling or the sense that the game was a special occasion by any means. But, but... Um, how cool was it just just knowing that you know 300 games later here we are? It's it's pretty amazing just to, to be a part of that and uh, to actually be the team that's hosting that and uh, 
and then to be playing such a historic team like Orlando with a class owner and just a really solid team all around. Uh, I looked at their defense and stuff, and, you know, it, it's very similar to uh, how I have my defense now with the 3D linebackers and the way they have their defensive backs. And it's Orlando's a team that you kind of look at as a, a guide to see where you are and how your team's progressing. And uh, I'm happy with where we're at. And uh, it was definitely special to do this. And, and uh, you couldn't ask for a better owner to play against for the 300th game. And that's the fun. Uh, Robert Smith making a little fighting. That was pretty cool. Right, yeah. Robert, for those of you that don't know and, uh, and weren't here tonight, Robert Smith, a former Minneapolis – or <laughs> Minneapolis, Minnesota uh, Viking <laughs> running back – I'm I'm used to calling the Maulers and uh, and I forget that it's just Minnesota Vikings, but um, yeah, he was in the chat tonight. He popped in. He uh, he talked to DW Six Killer, the wide receiver for the Oklahoma Renegades, otherwise known as Roddy Boy Seventeen on uh, on Slack, and uh, and he and he actually popped in and tuned in and and I really hope he does check us out because um, you know we're we we want to get NFL players past and present. Um, we want to we want to get them excited about this. We want to get them invested in this uh, because it's all about making dreams come true and making things happen that you wouldn't normally uh, achieve. And uh, Jason, you are now two and zero this season and atop the West Division. So congratulations. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Thank you so much, Jason. Jason McGee, owner of the Sioux Falls Sparrows. Uh, he was just on the call. Open line now, 210-473-8428. Maybe get one more person uh, who may have played or, or coached tonight. I, I know it's a bit of a light night um, from a user-player perspective and from a game perspective because usually we have three games on Wednesday nights. Um, but Dallas gets the win, pulls pulls a big upset um, or, or pulls off a big road victory. Not only is Dallas 2-0, and but they're 2-0 and on the road. Uh, something to think about. 313, you're on the SFL Post Game Show. AJ Levy here. How you doing, Cam? Hey, AJ. Good. I, I'm, I'm good. How about yourself? Good, good. Congratulations on game number 300 and 301, and more to come. Well, thank you. Thank you. Th- good job so far. Thank you very much. It, uh, it definitely feels like 300. <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm just sort of, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting through it. I'm, I'm, I'm just praying every day that the technology just works for once um but uh you know a great effort tonight by the defense you didn't necessarily jump out in the stat sheet yourself but as jason mentioned you know you've been you've been putting in some input in, in the film room and, and in coaches meetings and and you've really uh you really seem to have made an impact on this team defensively uh, the difference between week one and week two defensively was what, AJ? Uh, pretty much trying to attack weak points on a, as far as the opposing team offense. And there's a few things I've seen on film against OKC when Orlando played them, and pretty much I tried to capitalize on those things and – and hopefully that they ran sort of the same scheme. And there's a few plays that they did run, and we managed to capitalize on them on the defensive side. What um, What's it been like um, in your second season with Sioux Falls? What, what's the differences for you between uh, being a player in your first season and being a player in your second season in the SFL? Uh, let's see. Not having a rookie jitters, for one, as far as season one goes. Uh, season two, having some stellar linebackers in front of me. I'm not knocking the backups, but these guys are, you know, they flop the ball. And that was a big help for me and Jefferson back there in the defensive backfield. And, you know, they put pressure on the, on the quarterbacks, for sure. What was the pregame meal for your defensive line tonight? Because that was ridiculous. Well, pretty much starved ourselves. We came out hungry. <laughs> We're gonna eat good afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you what are you gonna eat as a, as your post game meal tonight? What sounds good to you? Well, probably gonna have some nice big old thick steaks. There you go. 
Um, Sioux Falls 2-0, and you're atop the West Division. Even, you know, you know going into week three, just like, you know, similarly in week one, you know going into week three you're still going to be on top of this division. Um, how important is it that, that you get off to a good start in the SFL um, because teams get better as they go along? It definitely helps to get out to a good start in the beginning because, you know, you never know when you can hit a losing streak. And those wins in the beginning can help out come towards the end of the season if you get back rolling again. Lil Mo, 1997 in the chat says that the pregame meal for the Sioux Falls D-line was cocaine mixed with steroids and speed. Any comment on that? Uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Lil Mo is just uh, joking and is is just being uh, charming and is not meaning that seriously seriously at all. Um, but uh, NYC is the next game um, Thursday for you guys. A long week to prepare. Of course, NYC has a longer week to prepare. Almost two weeks. Uh, they got a mini bye in there uh, heading into week three, I guess, uh, after playing on Monday night. But NYC gets their first win of the year against Carolina, uh, led a game, game-winning game drive. Um, but obviously their offense is, is predicated on Sultan Muhammad and, and getting him open. So so how do you approach the Sailors in week three? Uh, without revealing too much, is to say the game plan that we brought out this week probably won't exist. So... They may be looking for certain things as far as game film this week, but they may they will see a totally different defense. AJ Levy, free safety for the Sioux Falls Sparrows. Anything else to add? Nope, that'll be it. All right, thank you, AJ, so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Sam. All right, open line now, 210-473-8428. If you got a chance to see uh, any of the games tonight and you want to react to those, or you want to talk about Thursday's big uh, slate of games tomorrow night, Sharknado, Los Angeles at OKC is the commentary game. Doug Bose uh, plays his former team that he coached for. Uh, Queen City and Baltimore, a rematch of last year's Gray Final. And uh, D.C. and Louisville, a battle of undefeated teams there as uh, a couple of couple of, of past and present powerhouses, I guess you could say, um, will be taking the field as well. Really interested to see uh, Louisville and D.C.'s offense. They both put up 40 points in week one. Will they do the same in week two? It's very interesting how the four teams have gotten to 2-0 and that are at 2-0. and Santa Fe is scoring 57 points a game. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tallahassee is allowing 13 points a game. And uh, the big game next week, the game of the week, is, is Sunday. Uh, and it's Dallas's home opener opening up their new stadium. They host Tallahassee, a battle of undefeated teams um, on Sunday. That is going to be a heck of a game, and I'm guessing a defensive war. I don't know if anyone is going to score any points in that game. Um, and uh, Santa Fe has Carolina, of course, the battle between the two gold receivers against the two gold corners. That's also Sunday, so when you think about it, uh, Thursday, tomorrow, a tremendous slate of games. And then Sunday, a couple of great games on the SFL network. Uh, and, uh, man, it's a, it's a fun time to be a, a part of the SFL uh, right now as we head into the cross-conference season. Um, again, open line. Anyone that wants to call in, anything you want to talk about, any games, any matchups, we'll, we're leaving the line open for you here tonight. On a, on a slow night of, of uh, user players, 27-7. Sioux Falls beats Orlando. Dallas tops Cleveland 13-10. And in the next few minutes, if uh, we're not able to reach a caller, then we'll cut this off short and we'll start prepping for tomorrow's big night of three games um, and, uh, and certainly uh, prepping for uh, the big one in Oklahoma when the Renegades open up their home slate. It's also home uh, the home opener for Baltimore as well. Baltimore has a ton of players uh, that will be making their debut in front of their home crowd. That will be fun to watch as well. Um, interesting night for that division because NYC is 1-1. Is one and one. Um, Baltimore trails both Queen City and D.C. Could they all end up 1-1? One and one? Um, or will someone break out of that uh, competitive North division? 
I'm not sure that any Roughnecks or Vipers will be calling in tonight. Um, I think they're both a, a little bit concerned or or uh, alarmed by the way that they performed tonight. It was it was really a, when you look at the the box score, it doesn't look too too bad. But watching that game unfold uh, was very interesting. Um, Cleveland seemed to have it seemed like they had total control the whole game, and then something just sort of shifted or or there was a lack of shift in the fourth quarter and the vipers just fell empty again um it was uh it was an interesting interesting night one last uh final call 210-473-8428 to get on the post game show of course monday night we were flooded with callers a record either seven or eight callers uh monday night and um uh, tonight certainly a, a more subdued crowd i suppose in SFL Nation, but uh, Sioux Falls uh, now uh, out of the group of four undefeateds. Potentially, uh, we could have two more teams join this group of four as sitting atop the league at 2-0. and The winner of D.C. and Louisville, and if Queen City is able to take down Baltimore. Uh, Marcus Bose, I should say, 16 yards on 16 carries. Not a good night uh, for Doug Bose's uh, kid. Tony Capone, 107 yards on six grabs, but a lot of it was on that 60-plus uh, yard touchdown. Um, it was a very interesting night around the league. Bones Malone, we should mention, 12 tackles, one sack, two passes defended, two tackles for loss. And our last caller of the night, I believe, is Ronnie Nickens. You're on the SFL postgame show. Hey, Tim, how you doing? Hey, um, I, I'm not sure um, where to begin with uh, with Cleveland's offense. I, I'm probably just as surprised as you are because I don't think anyone saw the early season struggles coming. Still a long way to go, but um, I, I'm guessing you, you want to talk about how King is still not involved. Oh, uh, yeah, and I'll probably be talking to the coordinator because I, he's going to have to do a better job of getting King involved in um, the game plan. And it seems to me he also, I believe, took out some plays that was very effective last week. He, some of them he took out, I believe, and uh, that, that's just not going to get it because it's this, this team has enough talent on it to be more explosive than what it is, and so he's going to have to figure that out. How much credit goes to Dallas's defense tonight? Bones Malone was outstanding. I mean, he was just, I mean, honestly, all over the field. And and King, they uh, Savage did target King a few times down the field, but they had him all wrapped up. What what did, I mean, what did you what did you think about about the Roughnecks D tonight? Uh, the the roughness uh, defense play uh, fine. I'm not gonna. I have nothing really to say about them. They did what they had to do. Uh, but our def our defensive uh, coordinator had the team ready. He's just not getting any help from the offensive side of the ball. Uh, He's doing a he's doing a superb job, but on his side of the ball, the offense got to um, pick it up and get this um, team moving. We're we're a better team than what's been shown so far. You've got uh, Orlando at home next week, and that is uh, that is also on Sunday. And actually, a typo on the post game show. Uh, image that Carolina Santa Fe game has been is Wednesday night now Wednesday night so uh, my apologies on that error but Orlando and Cleveland is on Sunday so a short week for the Vipers you host an Orlando team that's that's licking its wounds certainly after after a drumming tonight and then having to go back on the road to Ohio um, did you did you get it have you gotten a chance to see Anything out of Orlando and, and what you think, what type of challenges they present, or is this all about 
you know, it, right now it doesn't matter about our opponent. We just have to work on ourselves. Yeah, it's it, it's more of getting our our uh, team together. Uh, whatever they present to us, uh, it's the coordinator's job to um, figure that out. And so I'm going to leave all that up to the coordinators. That's their job to figure out what they need to do. But um, so on the offensive side, I I want to see more explosion. We're we're a better team than this, and the um, and what we're getting out of the offense is is unacceptable. There's four teams that are two and zero right now: Santa Fe, Dallas, Tallahassee, Sioux Falls. When the season began, which team are you? Um, uh, which team did you expect to be here at two and zero out of those four? I'm probably Tallahassee. Uh, I, I just being honest, I didn't expect Dallas to be uh, at two and zero. Uh, but they've done, they took taking care of their business, so that's where they are. Still got a lot of games to go, so, you know, it's not, it's not basically really, I guess, how you start, it's how consistent can you be to con- continue. And Cleveland, so we'll see how they do. Cleveland knows, and, all, Cleveland knows and, all about uh, those, uh, those, those late season runs, as we saw last year. Um, when the team was was really able to turn it around, that that's got to give you some confidence, right? I mean, you've seen you've seen this staff turn things around before, um, so they can do it well, again. Well, I I I know we're capable of it, uh, Cam, but uh, then uh, but it's still the coordinator's job to make sure to put the stars in position to do their jobs, and right now. Uh, he's not getting the uh, best use out of his st- of out of really out of out of a gold star. He's not really getting the best out of him, and so he's got to figure that out. Well, we uh, we wish you the best of luck in week three, and I'm sure we will see an explosive offense and an explosive Scott King next week. Thanks for your time, Ronnie. Appreciate it. All right, Cam. Talk to you later. Bye. Ronnie Nickens, owner of the Cleveland Vipers, obviously not uh, uh, not too thrilled with his performance. And why should he be? Just 10 points. I'm sure offensive coordinator Stevie T. Diggs is not too thrilled either with uh, with how the team played. And uh, and Cleveland shockingly staring 0-2 in the face uh, with Orlando coming to town. Boy, talk about a game where with two teams desperate to turn things around as Cleveland and Orlando combined for just 17 points on the night. They play each other to start off cross-conference in Week 3. This has been a presentation of the Simulation Football League and the SFL Network, the SFL Network post-game show. Uh, and SFL in Motion proudly present the SFL on Twitch.tv Uh, Thanks to Robert Smith, the former running back of the Minnesota Vikings, for stopping by and taking interest in the SFL tonight. And we hope to hear more from him in the future, along with many other past and present NFL players. For all of us in the SFL, this was a celebration of our 300th game and plenty more to come. I'm Cameron Irvine saying good night, and we'll see you tomorrow.